Air fryers are the hot new thing. They're selling like gangbusters and eating up social media with all sorts of fan pages. Hashtag air fryer. But today, Adam's going to give us the lowdown on this relatively new piece of equipment. These are pretty exciting, and they make some bold promises, Julia. Mm -hmm. They won't really deep fry food. These are air fried, but they promise nicely fried foods <laughs> using a lot less oil, sometimes as little as a tablespoon or less. They're also supposed to be pretty quick, and they're a lot less messy than oven frying or certainly deep frying. So we tested nine of these units. The price range was $60.20 to $249.95. Okay, that's a big spread. So you do you get to sort of investment territory with some of the prices. And let me tell you about the tests that we did. We tested each extensively by cooking a lot of frozen French fries, homemade French fries, chicken wings, and lighter chicken parmesan. And we compared all of the results with counterparts cooked in a conventional oven using ATK recipes for oven frying. Testers also measured each unit's height and footprint and evaluated how easy and safe it was to load with food, set the time and temperature to remove the food, and to clean. I told you there's a little bit of a learning curve with these mm -hmm. things, but as testers mastered the techniques, all of this food came out surprisingly well. And I want to offer you some oven fries mm. from our air fryer. I won't say no. Never say no to french fries. Mmm. These turned out pretty good. Now, these were frozen fries. These were frozen fries. They came out of the air fryer. They're pretty crisp on the outside, kind of it, fluffy on the inside, huh? They're better than most oven fries I've had. And the chicken wings were nice and juicy. The chicken parmesan was crunchy mm. and nicely browned. So the food was actually really good out of these things. It compared quite favorably to the conventional oven, mm. oven fried foods. So testers moved on to look at the design and the features. Now, there are a couple of kinds of controls. Some of them, like this one here, have digital controls. This one just has plain old fashioned analog dials. And initially, the testers responded better to the analog dials because they're just intuitive and easy to use. But there were a few instances during the testing where when they were putting food in, taking food out, moving a fryer, they would accidentally change the setting using these analog dials. That's not good. And they came to actually prefer the digitals because that eliminated that possibility. Testers also measured these things, as I said, and you can see they're pretty big. I yeah. mean, some of these things are like the size of a full-size food <laughs> processor or bigger. So they take a lot of counter space, but even though they have a pretty big footprint, they don't hold a whole lot of food. All of these maxed out at one pound of french fries or chicken wings. That's not a lot of food. So not great if you're feeding a crowd, but good if you're just serving two people. If you want to exercise portion control, which I never do. <laughs> to me, a pound of fries is a single serving. <laughs> In terms of accessing the frying chambers, there were two styles of access. I'm going to step around here and show you this one has the drawer style, mm -hmm. where it's just a drawer in the front that you pull out and the frying inserts right in there. Seems nice and if easy. If we go back over here, you can see the second type, which is the flip top type. Oh. And that one, you just pull the top up like this. Now, there were a couple of issues with this one. Well, I saw the base come right off the table when you first pulled the top up. It's, it's kind of unevenly weighted. This thing can really flop around. Mm -hmm. If it's underneath a kitchen cabinet, the top can bang into the bottom of the cabinet. And the worst thing the testers found is that the heating element is mounted in this lid. And because Ooh. the lid felt a little loose, they really thought that the thing could come down on their hands. Ah, that's While scary. they were putting food in and out. That's definitely not good. Non-starter. So testers were pretty sold on these as a category, and they were especially sold on the winner, which is the Philips Turbo Star Air Fryer Advanced Digital Model. It was the most expensive one at $249.95, so it's an investment. But it made great food. It had those digital controls that were easy to use. It has the drawer style access that testers really liked. It has an automatic shut off. It kind of stole the show. There was, however, a best buy. Oh, good. That's this one. It's the GoWise USA 3.7 quart 7 in 1 air fryer. <laughs> it's a little bit taller than the winner, it's a little bit wider than the winner, and the controls aren't quite as intuitive, but it's also less than a third the price at $75.15. So it's All a right. great sort of entry level air fryer. It's a bargain. It is. So there you have it. Air fryers are worth the money, and if you're ready to invest, check out the Philips TurboStar Air Fryer Advanced Digital Model at $249. $95. Or if you just want to test the waters with something a little less expensive, check out the GoWise USA 3.7 quart 7 in 1 air fryer, just $75.15.
Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.